What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to create tooltips in Figma in accordance with Google's material design system. Tooltips are a UI component that when activated will display information that help identify an element or they provide more context on its function. They are transient, paired, and succinct. Transient meaning that they are only shown for a limited amount of time. Paired meaning that they're always combined with another UI element. And succinct because they are a short piece of text rather than a long description. If you're not familiar with tooltips, I recommend going to Google's material design website. Here, not only can you learn about the usage, you can learn about things like placement, how they behave when interacting with another element, and basic theming instructions. You can even see the locations for both desktop and mobile. Let's create a tooltip that shows us how to print something. First thing I'm going to do is create some text. I will type the word print. I will change this font to SF Pro. You can use any font you want here. That's just what I'm using for this exercise. I'm going to change this to medium. And I'm gonna change this text to 14, the 20 pixel line height. I'm gonna reduce this to just minus 1%. After typing the word print, I'm going to take this text layer over here and I'm gonna type the word command and then let's change this font to font awesome pro I go here and you can see that that changes to the command symbol the information that we're displaying here is the keyboard shortcut to print something which is command plus P on Mac so now I have print I'm gonna type the plus sign and the last thing I'm gonna do is drag this over one more time and type I'm gonna take all of these hit shift a and then I'm going to change this in between them to just be six pixels like we have here I'm gonna apply 16 pixels of horizontal padding, and then I'm gonna do six pixels of vertical padding. I'm gonna change the fill here to be a dark gray, and I'm gonna add four pixel border radius, and I'm gonna change this text to be white. And then this will be the mobile component size, which is a little bit larger than desktop, and you don't have keyboard shortcuts on mobile, so I'm just gonna remove these three elements, but we'll keep a secondary component for desktop. Now, mobile tooltips are 32 pixels high, but on desktop, they're only 24. The first thing that we're gonna do is actually reduce this text size to 12, 18 pixel line height. And then I am going to change the horizontal padding to eight pixels. And then I'm gonna change this to only be three pixels. And then you have the desktop component. So now that I've got those two, let's select all of this. And I am going to create a component set that we will call tooltip. And then I am going to change the property to type. You've got desktop and mobile. So if I take this and I bring it over here, I can switch between the desktop and mobile component. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually show you how this animates in a prototype. I'm gonna create a new frame that's a MacBook Air. I'm going to just make a very rough header component here with a print icon for illustrative purposes. Let's make this white and then we'll have a bottom stroke which will act as a divider let's have this be that lighter gray color we'll have the height of this be 56 pixels and we'll align this with the top and then the last thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to type the word print and then i'm going to again use font awesome to make an icon out of that it's a little bit small so let's change that to 16 pixels and then i am going to change the height of that to be 16 and then i am going to change the horizontal and vertical padding so i've applied auto layout and then i'm going to add a light fill here let's actually make that even a little bit lighter gray and then i'm going to add four pixel border radius and then i am going to move that up to this top area i'm just going to put this in the center for now to illustrate how this works i'm going to take this and have it be four pixels from the component itself and then i'm going to duplicate this whole frame. Please note that there are a lot of different ways you can do this. This is just a rough way to prototype the interaction. I'm gonna change the opacity of this to 0.1% so you can not see it. I'm gonna change this black icon to be a medium to dark gray. And then over here, I'm going to have that be a darker gray. And then you've got the component here. And then I am going to click on this, select prototype select this icon and then change on click to while hovering we'll say navigate to this other screen and we're going to change this to smart animate and we're going to change the easing to 100 milliseconds if i hit play i've got my prototype view and you can see on hover the color changes slightly and the icon animates in if i wanted to make this a little bit more fluid i could extend this time to be let's say 300 milliseconds and then if i go back over here and i hover you get a 
more fluid interaction. One thing to note when you're viewing a tooltip like this is that it's technically supposed to go away after 1.5 seconds of no mouse activity, even if you're still hovering over that component. The reason for that is you've already provided the contextual guidance for how this component works, and it doesn't make sense to persistently show this element. I showed how this works on desktop, but on mobile, you accessed either by a long press or when on Android, if you're in a focus state. I'm not going to go into how to do that in this video, but material design's guidance is really helpful in figuring out how to do that. And that's it. You now know how tooltip components work for both desktop and mobile in Google's material design guidance. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of tooltips, how to create one on both desktop and mobile, and when to use them when making an interaction. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.